turns out that Kanye West will have a difficult time selling and making a profit from those white lives matter t-shirts. Because it turns out that he doesn't own the trademark to that phrase. And in fact, the individuals who do own the trademark are two black radio hosts based in Phoenix, Arizona. Now, before we go on, here's a reminder of what those shirts look like. Kanye and Candace Owens modeled them in Paris during a fashion show. And it's trashy to say the least. We all know what the White Lives Matter phrase is in response to, which is Black Lives Matter, which stemmed from the fact that people just wanted cops to stop shooting unarmed black people who were not posing an imminent threat to them. So, you know. I don't think that's too much to ask, but people got offended by that. And so to see Kanye West kind of go along with that message is pretty gross. Now, nonetheless, he debuted those shirts during his show at Paris Fashion Week. Luckily, it looks like Kanye, though, will not be benefiting financially from that apparel. Uh, Ramses Ja and Quentin Ward, two black radio hosts in Phoenix, Arizona, were gifted the trademark from a longtime anonymous listener of their show, Civic Cipher. The listener procured ownership of the phrase early last month to ensure it didn't fall into the wrong hands and offered to transfer the trademark to Jaw and Ward in September. It officially entered their possession on October 28th, giving them sole ownership over the phrase and the ability to sue anyone who uses the saying for financial gain. Now, according to Ja, the gift of the trademark was basically thinking ahead when he acquired the right. The person who acquired it, and you know, that trademark was just thinking ahead, which I love. I love when anyone thinks ahead because I feel like no one does that these days. So the way the law works is either you're owning phrases or it's up for grabs for people to make money off them. This person who first procured it didn't really love owning it because the purpose was not necessarily to get rich off of it. The purpose was to make sure that other people didn't get rich off of it. So I'll stop here and ask Emma, how much do you love this? <laughs> like, how good I, is this? I love the forward thinking nature of it. Um, it, rem- it reminds me of like an old um, Sarah Silverman bit from Jesus is Magic, her stand up special, where she said, like, to get back at Osama for 9 11, I'm gonna buy Osama bin Laden.com, Osama, Osama bin, Osama.com, or it was like, I'm butchering it, but she's like, you're gonna have to settle for Osama one. And, and that's kind of, that's kind of how, like, what this situation is, is these guys were forward thinking. They didn't want racists to be able to co opt this uh, clear and obvious attempt to reframe the conversation around police brutality and systemic racism as a, like a reverse racism trope stripping out all the context of why black lives matter was such an important movement and remains such an important important movement in this country and so i mean i love that he's not going to be able to sell those shirts but he's in such a state of mania that i don't even know if he remembers what like <laughs> remembers that i mean he's 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 on one right now. I, I, the whole Kanye thing makes me sad. I, I don't know about you, but but uh, I'm I'm a little bummed out about what's going on with him right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think the Kanye story is like it's a microcosm of a bigger issue, uh, a widespread issue that I see in the country, which is uh, Men, people who have mental health conditions, I mean, in the case of Kanye West, he had the resources and could have continued with the medication, the treatment he needed to stay stable. Um, and he's been open about his bipolar disorder before, so I'm not, you know, diagnosing him myself. I'm just basing my commentary on what he himself has said about his own mental health. But at the same time, you know, moving off of Kanye and just kind of focusing on the broader picture, you know, when you look at what happened to Nancy Pelosi's husband, Paul Pelosi, he was attacked by a man who clearly has his own mental health issues. And at the same time, we have an entire political party right now with a right wing media apparatus that constantly eggs people on constantly uses divisive and violent rhetoric. I think that discourse encourages people who have mental health issues to carry out acts of violence, politically motivated acts of violence. 
That's what I'm seeing happen over and over again. And there's really no way to stop it. Like that's the thing that I'm grappling with at the moment. What do you do about that? What do you do about it? Because I mean, after what happened to Paul Pelosi, who obviously like I don't have a lot of love for politically, but I don't want people to be violently assaulted like that and potentially murdered, which could have happened to him. Like they didn't like in any way temper their discourse or rhetoric on the right. They just kept going and amplified the violence even more. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess like I, I know we're having we're in the bonus episode. We were trying to have fun, but uh, this just brings up so many thoughts that I've had kind of brewing in my head, especially because our Kyrie Irving has now come under fire for anti-Semitism as well. Um, sharing a an Alex Jones documentary, um, and and this is separate from the White Lives Matter conversation. I realize this is a bit of an aside, but this is a part of Kanye's like whole recent public tirade of bigotry, and 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 it's like this unease that I feel as a white woman, kind of commenting on some of the black Hebrew Israelite kind of adjacent conspiracy theories that are also rooted in anti Semitism, which yeah. is just let me, that, let me just I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt you. Um, I don't know if this will make you more comfortable. But as a white woman myself, I feel fully comfortable uh, criticizing that ideology and the disgusting anti Semitism that's baked into it. No, so and uh, I have yeah. I have but there is just like a small part of me that understands that like these are both groups that have been just the victims of slavery and genocide, I mean, respectively. And there is a complicated relationship, especially when it comes to the United States. And there are the conspiracy theory of black Hebrew Israelites is like meant to empower black people and saying we are the true chosen people. And it's a revisionist history narrative that's meant to empower them. But then it becomes anti Semitism because in, in certain sects, because mm-hmm. there is just like a not not enough of a historical understanding, frankly, about what the Holocaust was and mm-hmm. how uh, how how that has the the ripple effects of that throughout history and stuff and so you know it, the the people who have platforms like Kanye West and Kyrie Irving should know better but it is just like a dynamic in the United States where it, it's it's has the 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 dressings of an empowerment narrative and that's why I think some people are falling victim to it because it says well, you're the true chosen people, and this is why. Uh, and and then you wade into anti-Semitism, but at the same time, we have to also be disavowing that uh, aggressively as well. Yeah, for sure. And look, I I know this will probably upset some people, but that's okay. I'm I'm good <laughs> at upsetting people. Um, I think that anything, any any religious doctrine, any ideology that uh, claims that any specific group of people are better than others because they're the the chosen ones or what like I just it's just by its nature incredibly divisive. There's no such thing as the chosen people, okay? And I think once you bake that into any given ideology that by the very nature of it, you know, dividing people um between like chosen better people versus everyone else it's just divisive and toxic and not good but can you, <laughs> you see know? though how maybe black people in america might fall victim to it and i'm more sympathetic no, to it sure, than say than sure. say than say I like see how Trump, anyone i could see how anyone can fall victim to it right but I remember, if you're black in this country yeah. you've been constantly disempowered you're poorer yeah. than uh, and and you have a much more difficult time having a leg up so you're like maybe more susceptible to that kind of conspiracy theory that Actually, you know, but but it is still not justifiable. I totally understand where you're coming from. I just feel like there. I want to have some expert on on the majority report to like explain the entire history of this conspiracy theory or something because it, it is something that's different and distinct from say right wingers and their anti semitism. There's just a different. Uh, there, these are different waters that you're wading into, even if the result is still anti semitism. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I guess I'm curious to see like what it's all about. But at the end of the day, uh, the end result is incredibly harmful to people who have been 
you know, terrorized and victimized in the worst imaginable ways. Um, and to see public figures like Irving and and Kanye West, you know, spout the anti-Semitism, which gives a like it gives permission yes. to other hateful people to spew their garbage. And we've seen more and more of that ever since Kanye West has like had his meltdown and his you know, anti-Semitic ramblings. Well, it so, adds it adds a new constituency to be okay with anti-Semitism, and that's like incredibly concerning. And and Trump yeah. also overperformed with black males in the last election, and this is something that they are actually actively targeting, and that's why they see Kanye as someone who's helpful to their kind of agenda because he's now spouting bigotry, and he goes on like with you know he's he's this is really the last thing I'll say about it, but he says. Uh, I know that the Jews are against me because my Jewish doctor prescribed me my bipolar medication and that made me less creative and so the Jews are against me. Like so that yeah. is that that's like the level that we're dealing with of somebody who's having some an extreme like episode right now. And then that's all that these anti-Semites needed just to come out of the woodwork and say, okay, that's our guy. Because that's how paper thin the divider is between open anti-Semitism and society right now. Yeah, exactly. And final thing I'll say about it is Never underestimate a multimillionaire's ability to paint themselves as a victim. That's it. Like, I just, what? Yeah. Thanks for watching The Young Turks. Really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.